one. Welcome back, everyone. I've received many questions regarding phenotypic and genotypic ratios. While this concept is addressed in the packet, it seems that it's uh, not necessarily helping you in the way that I had hoped. So feel free to watch the screencast to get some more information and practice with it. Here's our problem that we're going to start um, looking at first to help us to understand this concept. What fraction of pea plant offspring would be wrinkled when two heterozygous round pea plants are crossed? Also provide genotypic and phenotypic ratios. Use a Punnett square to support your claim. So this basic kind of problem we've all had experience with, and so I solved it right away as so I wouldn't waste any of our time. We've got the big R allele. This symbol represents the DNA code that resu would result in the pea plant producing a protein that would make it have a round appearance. This little r symbolizes um, a recipe in DNA that um, could possibly result in a different protein being produced and that protein would result in the pea plant having a wrinkled appearance. So its phenotype would be wrinkled. Uh, the question stem tells us that we have two heterozygous round pea plants. Um, I know then round is wrinkled to or round is dominant to wrinkled because it's the heterozygous offspring that are displaying the round phenotype. According to Mendel's law of dominance, that must mean that round is dominant to wrinkled. So here are the genotypes for the parents. Big R, little r being crossed by big R, little r. And I set up my Punnett square and I demonstrate meiosis. Parents do not pass on pairs of alleles to their offspring. Those alleles separate from each other during the process of meiosis so that an individual gamete contains a single version of an allele. So this parent plant that has the genotype heterozygous big R little r will produce some gametes that have just the big R recipe in it and other gametes that will have the wrinkled recipe in it. The other parent makes very similar gametes in regard for this one trait out of maybe 20,000 different traits that could be passed on in pea plants. Um, our Punnett square, we've got the results of our cross here. We end up with one F1 offspring, our first filial generation offspring, that would have the homozygous dominant genotype, two that are heterozygous, and one that is homozygous recessive. So this should all be review for you up until this point. Now, a lot of you are asking about the ratios. How do I calculate the ratios? Well, a genotypic ratio is a ratio of the genotypes. How many homozygous dominant to heterozygous to homozygous recessive genotypes are present in the first filial generation, present in these offspring? The phenotypic ratio is what's the ratio of the phenotypes of the offspring? In this case, how many round to how many wrinkled offspring do we have as a result of this particular cross? So let's write it out. Let's figure this out. As I just said before, when we do these ratios, we're looking at um, the F1s. We're looking at these offspring that we have present right here in our Punnett square. So for our genotypic ratio, again, how many of these individuals are homozygous dominant? There's only one. So I have a one. How many of these offspring are heterozygous? Well, there's two offspring that are heterozygous. So there's my two. How many offspring are homozygous recessive? According to this cross, there is one offspring that is homozygous recessive. So the genotypic ratio for these parents is a one to two to one genotypic ratio. For all of the F1s produced from these parents, we would expect that there would be one homozygous dominant offspring to every two heterozygous to every one homozygous recessive offspring. Now, you might be wondering, you know, this, this ratio stuff is really kind of complicated. Well, this is how geneticists talk to each other. They talk to each other in ratios. They don't talk to each other in percentages. It's all about the ratio. Like a 1 to 2 to 1 genotypic ratio tells a geneticist a lot about the inheritance pattern of that particular trait. Or a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. Or a 0 to 0 to 4 genotypic ratio. Or a 0 to 4 to 0 genotypic ratio. All that information tells the geneticist so much about the parents involved in um, producing those offspring. So once again, we have a genotypic ratio of one to two to one. There is one homozygous dominant offspring to every two heterozygous to every one homozygous recessive. The numbers are basically holding the places of those specific genotypes. The homozygous dominant comes first, the heterozygous gets listed second, the homozygous recessive gets listed third. 
Now, if we were looking at pea plants and we're trying to figure out what their phenotypic ratio is, as we look at a pea plant, we can see that the pea plant seeds actually are round or they're wrinkled. We don't know what the genotype is of the round ones because according to our Punnett square, a pea plant can be round and have the genotype big R, big R, or a pea plant could have the heterozygous genotype big R, little r, and also be round due to the law of dominance. Wrinkleds, we know for sure what their genotype is. The only way that you could have a wrinkled pea is that particular pea has to have homozygous recessive genotype. So the phenotypic ratio in this particular scenario would be a three to one phenotypic ratio. There are three offspring that would have the dominant phenotype to every one offspring that would have the recessive. Now, if this is the only kind of problem that you've studied, what I mean by that is if you haven't watched any of the other videos about how to do genetics problems aside from the Mendel and Mono hybrid crosses, then I would suggest that you stop the video at this particular point in time and come back to it after you've learned about incomplete dominance problems. Because the next slide is going to guide you through how to come up with phenotypic and genotypic ratios for incomplete dominance problems. The idea is the same, but the problem is different. And if you haven't studied that kind of problem yet, I don't want you to get confused prior to your quiz. Okay, so if you're moving on, just keep on doing what you're doing. Otherwise, again, pause that video, come back to it at a later time. Okay, here we are with the next slide and a new question. So this last question is what fraction of carnations will be pink when a white petaled carnation is crossed with a red petaled carnation? Also provide genotypic and phenotypic ratios and use your Punnett square to support your claim. This particular inheritance pattern in carnation plants is what we call incomplete dominance. We know that it's incomplete dominance because we're given some big clues in the first sentence of the problem stem. What fraction of carnations will be pink? Hmm when a white petal carnation is crossed with a red petal carnation. Incomplete dominance, um, this inheritance pattern results in three phenotypes in the offspring as opposed to two phenotypes present in the offspring. We might not necessarily always have the three phenotypes, but there's the potential for the three different phenotypes. We also see two of the phenotypes blending together and kind of mixing together to form the third phenotype. You can imagine mixing red paint and white paint, it would result in some pink paint in the end, right? So if we have a carnation plant that has red petals and it gets mixed with or crossed with a carnation plant that has white petals, that's going to result in offspring that are going to have pink petals. Our key is a little bit different. Our key for these kinds of problems, I use two different letters. Um, I could use these letters as superscripts, but I think we talked about that that's just so many letters to keep track of that I think it just makes more sense to use two different letters. I use the letter R to represent a red allele. I use the letter W to represent a white allele. And then the pink uh, phenotype results from inheritance of a red allele as well as inheritance of a white allele. I also make a, a more complete key for these kinds of problems because there's a lot to keep track of. And I think the more information that I'm recording on my paper, I, it just helps me to kind of stay organized and it helps my teacher to see where I'm at in my level of understanding. So the genotype RR would result in homozygous red phenotype. The genotype RW would result in heterozygous pink phenotype. And if a flower had the genotype WW, it would have white phenotype and the alleles are the same, so I use the word homozygous. I did abbreviate here just for space. Um, you're always welcome to abbreviate. That works fine for me too. So these parents, one parent has red petals, the other parent has white petals. And when they go through the process of meiosis, they separate their copies from each other. They separate their homologous pairs of chromosomes and they pass on just a single copy in a gamete. So that's what I'm showing on my Punnett square, and here's the results. All right, so why don't you try to figure out what the genotypic ratio would be, and then try to figure out what the phenotypic ratio would be. All right, so the genotypic ratio for this problem, 
see if it will let me type. Um, there are no big R, big R offspring. And I note that with a zero. Hmm. Well, let me go. There you go. I note that with a zero. And there are four offspring that are heterozygous, RW. And there are no offspring that have the WW genotype. So the genotypic ratio is zero to four to zero. Now my ratio here also matches the order that I have the genotypes in my key. I have RR first, that's our, one of our zeros. I have RW listed second, there's my heterozygous situation. And then my WW is listed third, there's the zero to represent that there are no offspring that have the WW genotype. Now for phenotypes, what would be the phenotypic ratio? I hope you got it right, and I'm sure that you did. It is a zero to four to zero phenotypic ratio. The genotypic ratio and the phenotypic ratio are always the same in incomplete dominance problems because there are three potential genotypes by doing a cross such as this. There are also three potential phenotypes, red to pink to white. So it is not a four to zero phenotypic ratio, it is a zero to four to zero phenotypic ratio. All right, as always, let me know if you have questions about anything and let me know how I can help you to better understand and master these concepts. Have a great day.